catastrophe. Um, catastrophic. And yet, and then is it any wonder, you know, Hillary's trying to position herself like she's going to be the third term and then wonders why she got shelled in New Hampshire by Bernie Sanders and continuing to get shelled. So what do you think? Let's go out to line one. Christy is listening on WVLK in Kentucky. Christy, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, um, oh, this is in reference to what you said earlier um, about Barney Sanders. You referred to him as the way your tone implied that a socialist is a bad thing. Is that how you feel? Because you referred to him as a socialist. And he right. said it in such a way that you were disgusted. Uh, well, first of all, he's referred to himself that way. And uh, yes, of course, of course it is. This is the United States. Uh, we, we don't believe in socialism. I mean, who is there anyone listening like yourself? Do you, do you want to really pay 75 percent taxes or or even higher? Many of the the programs that he supports, Christy, they they have failed in other nations. And we continue, despite this president, to be the envy of the world. Why? Why would we want to embrace socialism? Do you think that? Do you disagree? Socialism, it's its not a bad thing? There is, is a socialist program. Do you have a problem with the military? Apparently, you want Beyonce to get up and hurrah the military, but that's a socialist program. Well, I what I was saying about the halftime show with Beyonce, Christy, was of all the different people that you could have had a tribute to or uh, somehow honored, I can't imagine that the Black Lives Matter group and Black Panthers would would make my top 50 type organizations I would want, would want to honor. But but you picked up on it. You don't think being a socialist is a bad thing. Talking to me, am I even still on the air? Yes, of course you're on the air. I was trying to give you an opportunity on that. But I'm telling you, and I'll tell you more why socialism is not what we need. 1-855-400-7282. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. It's been noted, often, by pundits, that the tone of our politics hasn't gotten better since I was inaugurated. In fact, it's gotten worse. That there's still this yawning gap between the magnitude of our challenges and the smallness of our politics. Which is why, in my final State of the Union address, And in the one before that, I had to acknowledge that one of my few regrets is my inability to reduce the polarization and meanness in our politics. That is President Obama. Well, you're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Michael will be back tomorrow. But in the meantime, you can log on to our website, michaelsavage.com. Latest headlines such as... How about Iran is broadcasting images of the U.S. sailor in tears? The nerve. If you don't think there's something broken, if you don't think we're not feared, we are not feared in the world. Can you imagine under a President Trump, Iran or another nation broadcasting images of a U.S. sailor in tears? Or also another headline at michaelsavage.com. Read all the latest. The Nevada rancher arrested by the FBI in Portland. Or even the Muslim baggage handler. Do you hear about that? Boasting about being able to take down a plane. You can read about all of that. Plus, you can also order right now Dr. Savage's latest ebook, Diseases Without Borders. I mean, incredible timing with what is going on in the world right now. We're going to touch on that at some point this afternoon. But the Zika virus, I mean, right now, the Washington Post is reporting that apparently miscarriages reported to U.S. women with the Zika virus, according to the CDC. We'll touch on that. But again, you can read all the latest. Just go to the website, michaelsavage.com. And also, follow on Facebook. It's Michael Savage on Facebook. Click the like button. And also, follow the program on Twitter. It's A Savage Nation on Twitter. If you'd like to call in the program, whether you're listening on a great station like WABC, or maybe you're listening in San Francisco or Dallas or anywhere coast to coast, you can call in 1 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. Line 2, 
D is listening on WMAL in our nation's capital. D, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Thank you for taking my call. What we're looking at with respect to Hillary and Bernie Sanders, they're like conjoined communist twins. And what really concerns me is that the younger demographic is naive to the fact that what they're buying is, again, the, the, the bill of lousy goods that the lying left is selling them. In the meantime, they're totally unaware about the deficit, like, like with money coming out of our ears. And in Europe, they're already having negative interest rates, which money is being taken out of people's pockets as we speak, coming to a theater near you. That's what I'm worried about. It's very frightening. You know what's interesting, D, is I don't know uh, if you have any contact with anyone that is of college age right now. Do you know of any college students or deal with any college students, D? Yes, I do. You do? Well, I... I get a chance to do quite a bit of public speaking, and I get invited to speak quite a bit at the colleges and various college students, and and I'll ask them at the end. I mean, I generally talk about politics and broadcast and and uh, various you know things, current events and so forth. But I'll ask at the end, you know, who is supporting Hillary Clinton? Show of hands. Who's supporting? Bernie Sanders. And indeed, the majority. I just spoke at a college within the past two weeks. The majority of the students raise their hand for Bernie Sanders. And D, when I ask them, why is it you're going to support Bernie Sanders? Do you know what the number one reason that comes back is, D? I have no idea. Because he's going to legalize marijuana. That, thank you for the call, D. Folks, this is what you're dealing with. When people talk about we got to get young people involved in the system, I'm t- I've spoken at two colleges just in the past month, and both times... When I I try to say, what is it about Bernie Sanders? The the number one thing that comes back is the fact they're under the impression he's going to legalize marijuana. So when we talk about, you know, young people need to be part of the system and and the fact that Madeleine Albright stood up at a rally and said, you know, you young women, there's a special place in hell for young girls that aren't supporting other women. That's not registering with them. I'm not saying it's everyone. But, you know, it it, it comes back to of, uh, you know, everyone... You know, most people seem to have their own core issue. There's a lot of people. One issue defines what it's going to be early on with Trump. I, th- I think it was immigration. I think it's going beyond that, but it started that way. Uh, and, and right now with Bernie Sanders, he has a lot of different things. But with young people, that seems to be a big draw for the for the uh, for the uh, for Bernie's campaign. Let's go to line nine. John is listening on KKOH. John, this is John DePietro, and you're up in the Savage Nation. Hello, John. Hi. So my thing is, is Obama has been a complete success, but he's been a good success at destroying our country, our morals, our ethics, our economy, and dividing our nation. So, yes, technically he has been a success. He's done everything he's wanted to do. <laughs> I can't wait for him to leave the office so he can get somebody else in to fix this. John, do you do you agree with? Um, I mean, that's one thing that Marco Rubio. I know he kept repeating himself over and over uh, in, in the in the debate. But do do you agree with Marco Rubio, Senator Rubio, who says as much as people want to portray him, the president, as he's incompetent or he makes all these mistakes? Senator Rubio is trying to say, understand this, this was all by design. These are not mistakes. He knows exactly what he's doing. Do you agree with that premise, John? Yeah, I do 100%, but I am a Trump supporter, but I do agree with that 100%. Uh, hey, John, before I let you go, there's a, also a story uh, that's out today. Bloomberg has has a story where they did a focus group in South Carolina, and the focus groups are starting to come back, basically, that that voters feel that Trump is inevitable. The Trump becoming the president is inevitable. Do you agree with that? Is the is the Trump candidacy as the Republican front runner making his way towards the White House? Are you starting to feel that that is inevitable? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I am a millennial, and I'll tell you what, I support the guy hundred percent. He is. Uh, he's he's going to fix our country. He's going to give us, uh, if you know what I mean, our colonies back, and that's something we need in this country. So, yes, I do. Thank you for the call, John. You can dial into the program 
400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. There's a story in the Washington Post, and we're going to play some of the sound coming up uh, in just a little while. But Bernie Sanders riding high after a decisive win in New Hampshire. And where does he head? New York City to have breakfast with civil rights activist Al Sharpton. If you won New Hampshire, is Al Sharpton someone that you would try to court to get support? If you were running for office, is Reverend Al Sharpton the type of individual that you would want to get support from? Is that someone that you would would go and try to court their support? Would you support someone that that's who they're reaching out to, Sharpton, to try to get their support in the bid for president? one 855 400 Savage. James on line four is listening on WVNN. James, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Good afternoon, Mr. DePetro. Hi there, James. My point is with President Obama is basically he has done an end run around Congress in getting a lot of these executive orders through to get his will done. Besides that, the mishandling of Benghazi, the Bo Bergdahl fiasco. I mean, I'm a veteran myself, and that just galled me to no end, sir. I don't blame you, especially when you talk about, uh, thank you for the call, when you talk about uh, 13 hours, again, which I, I recognize it, it wasn't a blockbuster at the, at the theaters, folks, but you should still see it. And that is something that, I, I, as much as people mention Hillary Clinton and Benghazi, until you really see that film, and those of you that have seen it, when it really resonates, that she she does she has no business running for president. She she went to bed. She did not care about Ambassador Stevens, the Americans that were were trapped there. But you know, I I think this says a lot of why her campaign is absolutely in free fall right now. And they're talking about major changes. They're talking about a shakeup. You know, when you look at it. Sanders has nowhere to go but up in some of these other states. She has nowhere to go but down. Every time they're looking at the polls, the Clinton people, their numbers are falling. And every time he looks at the polls, his numbers are rising. I mean, he is in a far better position. I mean, I I would not support either one. And I don't think most of you listening would. But it said something that Hillary is carrying on this. I mean, she's delusional to think, and, and this is part of the problem, that that they actually think that this has been a successful presidency. Look at all the people that are angry and why they're angry. Line 5, Mark is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Mark, you're up. This is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mark. Hello. I, I truly do believe that, Ameri- uh, that, that uh, Obama's presidency for this country has been unsuccessful for the country as a whole. I mean, our status on the world stage has diminished greatly. Um, this country has become so divided. I, it's just been an absolute disaster. And, and I really believe that this election coming up is going to be a pivotal point in American history because America is going to choose what direction that they want to go in, whether they want socialism with Bernie Sanders or whether they want uh, really socialism with, with Hillary as well, or they want someone that's going to really make a difference and turn the country around. I think you're right, Mark. And, Mark, thank you for the call. You know, I, I mean, is there anyone that thinks that we are headed in the right direction? I think if people truly felt that way, you you wouldn't have someone like a Donald Trump overwhelmingly striking a chord. Huge, as he likes to say, but big time in the polls. Big time win in New Hampshire. And with a full head of steam coming out of there and now going right into Nevada and South Carolina. I, I think his message would not be resonating if people were truly happy with the way that things have gone. Let's go to line eight. Hammer is listening on WBOB. Hammer, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Hammer. Good. I just screwed the, the stimulus worked. It supported so-called capitalist. So we don't have real capitalism. We have a mixed economy, and we have crony capitalism. And it's been that way for about 180 years. And you said this is the worst racial 
climate. Not so. Or 